I waited 30 seconds. Should be enough. Hello, hello, and welcome to another brand new live stream, new day, new series <laughs> this time, but uh, same co host. So please wave at your screens and say hello to Lauren K. Nixon. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm perfecting this. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. How has your day been so far? Yeah. All right, all right. Not bad, not bad. Getting stuff done, doing some organizing mostly. Mm -hmm. Doing okay. some stats. Okay. <laughs> and uh, How about you? How about you? What you been up to? Uh I uh, not much. I did go out get me some uh green apple energy drink today which was nice. missing yesterday and, i have mystery uh, tea i don't actually know what kind of tea it is because uh -huh. it came from neil <laughs> <laughs> from my nana Remo mug uh -huh. which is impossible to see because and uh, i spent the morning yeah i can see this. oh yeah that's the logo right no no oh looks pretty what <laughs> color is it though it does not come uh, you know come it's to dark blue Oh, it's there. Oh, like my favorite color and stuff. Yes, I love it. That's that's the code for. Uh, I think. Never mind. I was I was <laughs> I about to tell you the the hex code for it. You know the the one that mm -hmm. code for colors because I recently looked it up. Uh, the if you if people who are watching this can see, uh, my my stream theme is primarily blue, and uh, and I would. And a little bit of purple, which I would I must admit that I started liking in 2021. <laughs> 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 because up until this, I mean, up until now, uh, you know, through uh, throughout childhood and all of my 20s, uh, I I was more of a blue and black guy, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't really pay attention to the other colors, and I always like I I. Uh, like I outwardly admit that I'm not very good with colors, right? Because I don't get you know the names of colors. I, I get get it mostly wrong. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I, I've started liking purple uh, oh, now cool. as a backup color for blue. <laughs> <laughs> so my stream has mostly blue and a little. Uh, what, what's the word? Tinge, hint. Tinge. A tinge. Tinge or tinge. Okay. Both, both work. Okay. A tinge of purple in it. Uh, so, okay, we are not talking colors today. We are talking <laughs> new series. As you can see on yes. the screen, it says the bucket list, <laughs> which we totally just didn't come up with in the last like thirty seconds. Yes, we, I know. <laughs> Very. We, we planned ahead for this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's completely you know well rehearsed. Uh, well, I mean, it's screen. ironic because we actually have been planning for this for about three months. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have re rehearsed this stream, you know, multiple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so rehearsed. We actually we did talk about impromptu versus rehearsal rehearsed uh, in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. You have more experience than me on on talking with you know on being on panels and you know at least yeah. you know on that stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts on impromptu versus rehearsal? Quick thoughts um, before we move on. If, because uh, I'm not a person that enjoys improv, so mm -hmm. uh, being improvised, improvised stuff. I can do script work and I can respond flexibly, but I can't think fast enough to be on the ball in yeah. improv yeah. most of the time. I think because I'm a writer rather than a doer. Yeah. Um, but in panels, it's fine because I'm just answering questions like we're chatting here. But often, if I know I'm going to have to do an impromptu set of questions and i don't know what's coming i will be practicing in the shower <laughs> huh. like just but, shooting uh, questions back and I, forth. are you like, like the 90 percent of the people who have those the, the the what we call butterflies in your stomach before you know going on uh, i used on to air or um, on stage or whatever i i well i've conquered those here by sketching for the last fortnight <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, it's just because i don't like my face being visible i think 
Um, but yeah, if I'm on stage, you do get that sort of adrenaline rush. Ah. Uh, but it takes easy, a while, right? It, it takes oh, the adrenaline. Ad- <clears throat> it's a hard word, okay, to to it say. Is. <laughs> the adrenaline takes over but it takes time to you know yeah the, the, there's always those initial few moments that that are the, those, those are the key i i feel that yeah. separates you know the the <laughs> i the, used to do a lot good, of stage the great stuff ones from the average ones yeah it, it i used to do loads of stuff when i was a teenager and at uni and then i stopped for a while I and see. then okay you remember i was recording recording i was recording songs <laughs> um and i was doing that because i realized i was too afraid to sing in front of people which i've never had in my whole life it's about five years ago so mm-hmm. i did that and then i started going to rhubarb which is the poetry club and reading there and th- things started happening to me that had never happened before yeah where i'd get up and I'd, I'd have the piece of paper and i'd be a bit scared but then i would stop breathing as deeply as i wrote and about halfway through i'd be like i can't draw breath what's happening yeah <laughs> and it was just because i hadn't let myself calm down and into it so yeah practice practice, practice makes exactly that is the key also uh my uh, my i have i don't have any good <laughs> good experience at all with public speaking uh, i have only uh poor ones and uh, i have i have bad and then worse uh, experiences <laughs> uh, some where which which even if i'm reading off a paper where my hands are shaking like that and it's so visible to everybody i'm like yeah. <clears throat> even though all i had to do was read from a paper exam yeah. for example it was during my high school uh, we, we used to have this uh, assembly uh, in the big, in the start at the start of the day right yeah uh, where uh, one person you know use mostly from the highest uh, like 10th 10th standard uh, w- would be appointed uh, the task of uh, allotted assigned mm-hmm. the task of uh, reading the news <laughs> mm. uh, for for the rest of the school and of of course there was like a stage and you had because you know you're you're reading for the entire school yeah. and the, all the kids are in front of you of all all ages all grades and i had that <laughs> oh yeah uh, you, you know i had be, and i was i only had to go on stage look down on the paper yeah but yeah i was young and of course now the internet is a little bit of help it gives you yeah. some tips um uh, like you know like like the one that you said you know deep breaths and yeah. and stuff i i also saw a uh, uh, dale uh, carnegie carnegie dale carnegie mm-hmm. the, the motivational speaker who Uh, yeah. a quote saying that uh, look into the eyes of your uh, audience mm-hmm. uh, while you you are speaking as if uh, every one of them owes you money uh, <laughs> i like it yeah so, i i mean just yeah. yeah that's how you you're supposed to make eye contact when you're on stage and like imagine it. like all of them owe you money and then it's with that mean. amount of fierceness <laughs> uh you you then you 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 know say your uh, what mm-hmm. you want to say and other such similar quotes like uh, you know what, what it does not matter uh, like what you're speaking is uh, 20% of what you say is what you know uh, mm-hmm. 80% depends on how you say it and, and all yeah. that like there's an also popular seinfeld quote the uh, stand up routine where he said uh, the primary the most people on on uh, 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 like most of humanity fears their number one fear is public speaking uh, the number two mm. fear is death uh, that's a joke actually mm. so yeah yeah if you remember, yeah if he, i think he did that on on one of the seinfeld episodes where he said that uh, so basically people are more scared of uh, giving the e- eulogy than you know being the one in the casket yeah uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, there's a lot of pressure it, on public speaking. Yeah, it feels think, good I that uh, I'm not the only one with the fear of public speaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that has helped a little. It's easier when you're performing as well, I think, because if you are if you're giving a speech and it's about the stuff that you do. Yeah. Either you know it and you're fine or you don't know it and you're struggling. But mm-hmm. if you're performing, you're somebody else anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're either a character or your your performance self. Yeah. So one of the things I've been struggling with because we've been recording every day is that 
while I am on the video, I am in performance mode. Yeah. Which means it's felt like I've had two weeks of show week, which means I just can't get any writing done because it all goes on that, and yeah, then I have to yeah. chill out. You are, for the rest you, are of the time. you are, you know, you are in in that character. Yeah. Uh, during this time, I, and I then it the takes a while to. Human. Switch, but yeah. The main that looks like a yeah. crazy person. I I love that <laughs> concept though. I think maybe I should I should also try. You know, come up with mm. a character who is the totally the opposite of me, like completely ha- with a, a lot of confidence and is outspoken and such, so that I can you know have disos disassociate, mm. so that when when I when I want to when I am or you know when I need to be. uh this outspoken or you know mm. on on stream show my that, face yeah. be on stage i uh, yeah i i just imagine myself as this other yeah character mine, and then I'm mine like, was called morwin because that was my online uh, oh, name at the time when i was a kid wow, but the thing is idea. you have to be careful you don't do the thing where you dissociate too much and that becomes you can't you stop being able to tell what's true yeah and you start doing things that you wouldn't do ethically yeah, as one yeah, person yeah, yeah. but no i more in was useful because I, i remember i was going up the spiral staircase onto the back of the stage dressed as a cowgirl the first time on stage in like five years when i was a kid and i was like okay lauren's terrified but more is having the time of her life yeah <laughs> so let's go with this i no, love that idea i love i i, I I'll, i'll give it a shot i i think yeah. i will because it yeah Yeah, I, I mean, uh, not take it to that extreme where <laughs> you start having those uh, dual identity problems. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like just, just for the sake of yeah, helping helping me out on uh, yeah. in such these areas where a Mr. Nags like character. Oh yes, Mr. Nags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where he, yeah, he just the moment he puts on the the those fake mus- mustache and and uh, 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 sunglasses, he just mm-hmm. becomes another person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I tell you, I, I've made a discovery today. My hair is now long enough that I can hide headphones entirely. Oh. <laughs> Behind the front flaps. <laughs> Yesterday I measured the longest my hair. Uh, I mean, okay. Okay, nah, not that long yet. But yet, yet, yet. <laughs> this this is the longest my hair has been in the last thirty years. Can you imagine? Yeah. The last time wow. my hair was this long was when I was two years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, cool. of course, because when you when you start school, we were the boys weren't allowed to have long hair and all that mm-hmm. with the uniform and stuff. Uh, yeah, there were restrictions, so I, my mom we had to you know cut mm-hmm. my hair and then. I'm glad that places are becoming slightly more flexible character. about that. Oh, stop. No, never mind. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> I did that yesterday also off stream. Uh okay. <coughs> so the next topic is a brief recap of uh, mm. what we did in the last in in our earlier series which was called uh, Prophets of Science Fiction with the same name as as the series we were reviewing yeah. in a way but much more than that we also talked at length about stuff that they did not cover as well yeah uh, in in the series uh i just i i so the series as a whole because we uh, we were we were talking about imdb <laughs> earlier as well mm. the series as a whole i i ra- i gave it a 8 out of 10 rating so mm. what what would you rate it as when i watched it i would have gone with an 8 out of 10 i think now i go with a 7 okay but but that's because uh, partly because you don't agree with some was some of their approaches yeah i have more knowledge yeah, so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i get i that. think it's really well done yeah for, for those who do not know what we are talking about or our <coughs> viewers or listeners it is a, a series that premiered on british television it, i don't know what oh, channel that was it's an american history channel what channel that was history channel history yeah. channel okay um in uh, late 2011 and early 2012 it is a total of it oh, there was only one season a total of mm-hmm. eight episodes and every episode they covered uh one science fiction writer writer uh, yeah um and those were what we were covering with each episode of our earlier series and they were talking about uh what those writers had come up with and the the ideas that impacted society but also creations 
and science and technology and, and advancements in those that have now happened, which is why the yeah. profits yeah. thing. Right. So what are your thoughts on how we covered it? <laughs> It was good. I it was good. It. Yeah, yeah. I, I like having. It. I like being able to chat about something like that with someone. Yeah. Um, and like I said yesterday, fun. it was it was a good uh, foundation for me as well. Like mm. you you mentioned, uh, because uh, you have grown up or grown yeah. up, yeah, with very science, much with, uh, fourth uh, yeah. generation nerd. Yeah. <laughs> On a healthy yeah. dose of science fiction, why, mm-hmm. whereas for me, it's an entirely new genre. Mm-hmm. uh both in book as well as film and um, so it was it was nice uh being able to you know learn more about the creators like i said yesterday the same uh, before i start uh you know getting into the creations uh a certain uh editions what, what what's that called addendums Addend- <laughs> whatever yeah addendums uh, yeah would be I think I already point said that yesterday as well. Uh, CGI versus uh, VFX. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's it, we covered that in yesterday's episode. Uh, one other was Kid Bogas episode nine thirty three on Twitch. If people want to go check it out, where mm. uh, no, he created. This. Yeah. He he it, during that entire stream he coded uh, an AI. Uh, artificial intelligence bot gave it a voice his own voice he recorded multiple of uh, responses possible responses saying you know like filler like can i can't hear you or can you speak up or hello and all these responses that usually takes place on a phone call and uh, he used it to uh, <laughs> uh, bait a scammer and mm. the ai ended up breaking his personal record of 17 minutes by 3 minutes of uh, get, getting the scammer to reveal a bank account which was then passed on so people if you are interested you should go check it out it is a very that's very cool yeah it was history in the making where as in you you could you can see in that uh, duration of 3 or 4 hours he him coding you can see it on screen him coding how he did it and then how he put it to use and uh, how the ai was able to you know talk to a person a real person on the other end and scam the scammer into yeah. giving their details that's really cool so episode that's 933 cool. if you want to go check it out the other was um uh it's a popular question that is asked people ask each other is if you have where to have a superpower what would you mm-hmm. choose and most people i think two of the most popular responses are why either you know flying slash teleportation one of these where you know you go you travel through space through a mm-hmm. something that is not yet uh accessible to humans yeah uh and the other is uh, invisibility mm-hmm. right they are the two most popular uh, i mean there are others as well mm-hmm. uh so if i were to ask you that question right now what do you have uh, an answer out of those two or out no 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 any, a- any. just uh, pretend like i asked you the question as in if you had magic, a superpower what would it be magic in general because that gives you stuff like telekinesis and the so occasionally telepathy and transportation possibilities right but also healing magic magic and healing magic uh huh yeah so. because uh just yesterday i came across a question like this because reddit is one of those platforms where you know these kinds of kind of mm. conversations happen a lot <laughs> so i was just casually going through responses by anonymous strangers and mm. one of those i came across was a- a- astral astral projections astral projection in, yeah, nice out of body yeah, yeah. um another curious response i saw was uh, Uh, yeah, uh, time travel is a common one again, right? Mm. Uh, su- common pe- superpower that people wish for. But a curious response I saw was not time travel, but the ability to change uh, the pace of time itself. Oh, oh, I like that one. Like you yeah, know, if so you, you watch the movie Click and, uh, yeah. by Adam Sandler, where you know he he if he's bored he. he fast forwards time to get through yeah. it or if he's re- if he's really enjoying what he's doing 
you can slow it down oh that's cool that's uh, that i thought was an interesting one that i hadn't yet thought of <laughs> i was like okay what would you pick it's a good one i would i have a very boring answer invisibility <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah because if there is an awkward you. situation at that uh, can, i yeah. can just uh, vanish from and there was a back to edgar allan poe i promise i don't read him that often <laughs> but all i've been talking about for the last fortnight um there's a really good one it's the one where the mummy comes back that i keep talking about mm-hmm. where he's been embalmed and he comes back in yeah. a different time period the people who were who have just accidentally brought the mummy back to life it's a description of how they respond to the fact that it just sat up and told them off and uh, one of them uh, climbs under the table and one of them climbs out the window and one of them by means uh oh is it by peculiar means known only to himself managed to render himself entirely invisible hmm. <laughs> it's that thing where you you're so scared that you just go so still that you're sort of yeah. drawn in on yourself yeah. so he didn't mean he'd actually turned invisible but i love that that was just yeah. such a great bit of description yeah. Sorry. It's it's Sorry, a what? it's a similar that, that reminds me of of uh, I think a, a Facebook post I I had made long it came up in one of my memories FB Facebook memories where I had said that uh, my superpower is being invisible to girls or or, mm-hmm. or women uh, years ago mm. it it's a like it's a sarcastic take on you know not being able yeah. to uh, be noticed. Or mm. feel like you are being noticed by, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, just similar to that. Yeah, uh, there's a bit in Buffy where that there is actually an invisibility theme in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, yeah. and I just remember uh, Xander turning to Willow it. and going, "It doesn't surprise me." <laughs> <laughs> Xander turning to Willow At this and point, you're like, "Yeah, it's fine." <laughs> Should I use my newfound powers for good or for evil? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was also looking at uh, watch wa- like one one of these uh, YouTube videos that make fun of movies, as in mm. in in the name of you know criticism or whatever. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so the Harry Potter one, the most recent, of course, the first Harry Potter movie where uh, the 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 who, the one who made the video, the narrator, uh, was like, uh, nah, you know, gi- giving an invisibility cloak to an eleven-year-old. was oh obviously you know dumbledore is a smart guy <laughs> that was yeah. a smart decision to make uh that was yeah of course sarcasm yeah <laughs> like i mean i guess he was training him for for uh hero purposes but it does like the amount of marauder fan fiction i've read where james and sirius are using it for exactly what you would expect a teenage boy to use it for <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh Oh, so uh, at this point i think we should start giving homework to our viewers uh, <laughs> so for this i think with the first homework would be please write down in your com- in the comments if you're watching this on youtube uh, what your superpower would be if you had mm-hmm. had to pick one um and why and why yeah detail <laughs> minimum 50 words Uh, we'll be handing out points in the comments. I totally wouldn't do it if there was a minimum word limit. <laughs> no, come on, fifty words is is it, it? It's just two sentences if you think of yep. it. Yep, you would get healing magic, and that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, twenty words then. Just write in in twenty words. Just, what, which just write whatever you feel and like. And why? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. It says one viewer again, but we haven't had anyone talking. or in the chat yet so so I, i would have asked the same on twitch but never mind it's um, all good it's fine if you if you do turn up on twitch in the next like few seconds and feel like joining in then go ahead <laughs> yes please please do uh that was about i think the the brief uh, what was that review was of our brief. of our own yeah <laughs> of our own previous series mm-hmm. called the prophets of science fiction and now we move on to the bucket list <laughs> and over to you lauren what is the bucket list uh so and why is it the bucket list <laughs> you may have noticed that uh novi has uh, w- watched more movies probably really that i have 
No, well, we'll yeah, start with the books first. Was, we'll start with the books. Original. That was our original thing was you'd watch more movies, but I think it turns out that I've watched more than more movies. No, 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 no. Let's 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 make it clear now. Mm-hmm. It feels like at this point we have both watched about the same. About yeah, whatever. Because we're both kinds. almost the same age. Let's yeah. say we have both watched about the same number of movies. But the the catch here is there seems to be very little overlap in the very movies little. that we have watched yeah. uh, because of course there's like the movie industry is over 100 years old there are mm-hmm. a lot of movies out there uh, i would say the same but books like it's thousands of years so i can't say the same for so mm. we we started with movies so let's keep going uh, so uh, and the challenge for me is to you know look into that outside of that overlap into what i have watched that you haven't and then mm-hmm. come up with something for you to enjoy mm-hmm. and uh, yeah before i give you know give, give you back the stage <laughs> uh is it, i i think i will be picking something where because when when i watch movies uh just to you know be uh i typically look for you know the entire the whole experience mm-hmm. from the filmmaking to you know the story the the music uh the acting everything is for me i is important when you yeah. know when i because i am i i see myself as more of a movie buff mm-hmm. than a reader uh so i've spent more time analyzing movies and you know filmmaking mm. is something that i'm i'm interested in yeah so so you can expect where, from my from the from my picks for you mm-hmm. uh they will you you you'll get when 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 if when they come to you you you'll see when you eventually watch them uh why i picked yeah that uh so yeah carry on So yeah, sort of a cultural exchange really. Yes. Um uh cuz I do like watching movies and I, you know, I like the whole process. I like because I'm from a theatrical point of view, I like the costumes, mm-hmm. I like the set design, I like the lighting. I like scene pictures, I like seeing what how they're telling the story. But I can never remember anybody's name. So Novi <laughs> will regularly go, "Oh, this this particular director." And I'm like, "I've never seen any movies by then." And then we'll look it up and I've seen all of them. Yeah. I and it just doesn't <laughs> get in my head. Yeah. Um but what I do my superpower, my real superpower is reading. Um I I read ludicrously quickly. Um yeah. and I've read quite a lot of books. Hmm. And uh as many discussions have unfolded, Novi has not. Yeah. <laughs> so I I've, guess I, I've my read challenge will be finding Harry Potter and Tintin. I've never read any goosebumps. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean there's, there's an element we do have a lot where we don't have an overlap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did not see that coming though when when even when <laughs> the second time you said that. <laughs> <laughs> see, we have rehearsed this. Yeah. Uh but uh, how <laughs> I, I like, I like was Walker was goosebumps was... because this, this is a common I mean where, where, in the in the uh, in on the podcast with uh, Uh, Kelly who mm. is also from Hales from the UK. Uh she also made a similar claim saying she has watched a few uh, episodes of Goosebumps mm. on Nickelodeon and, and or um, but she has never read uh, mm. a, a Goosebumps. Uh, we had the book. whole set. We had um, the whole set in the library. Um it just didn't interest me at the time. Okay, so it was I there was, in the UK, right? Yeah. I mean, kids were reading. I, I I was of the impression that it was more popular in India and you know and the US and No, maybe, it's it's definitely not as much in loads, the UK. And uh, Neil's read loads of them. Um he's okay, he's read all, all the Goosebumps, all the Point Horror, whereas I was reading Point Fantasy and Dickens. <laughs> Cuz I was one of those really nerdy kids. Oh, actually no, I was reading the uh Dorling Kindersley Kindersley Book of Tortures, which is literally different ways of torturing people. <laughs> At what age is this? I don't know why this? I was reading that. It was great. It was it had cartoons. I'm like why was this in my library when I was a child? Um wow. and mysteries of the unexplained and things like that. So Yeah. Okay. I'm very eclectic <laughs> when it comes to my reading taste. Yeah. Which is which is going to be part of the fun for you because should, you will should, now Should be I be scared? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
that's all right. You live far away. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I meant, should I be scared at at uh, what no. uh, books I I'm I would be I'm going to be tasked with? I mean, eventually we have talked about Philip K. Dick. Eventually, I probably will set you Ubik, but not for a while. <laughs> I want to scare you off. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it's important for me to be op- going going in with an open mind uh, because mm-hmm. it's like I haven't read like we just uh, established. I haven't read basically anything because mm-hmm. any blight in J.K. Rowling it, it does not count as this is of you know the vast <laughs> uh, <laughs> range of books that have mm-hmm. been written in over hundreds of years and. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a small, small, little, tiny uh, <laughs> bit of you reading. Also, you also I've have done. to take into account all of the online uh, non-fiction reading you do, because you do read a lot online, uh, yes, non-fiction yeah. stuff. So, yeah, yeah. mostly yeah, it's, yeah, it's in there. On, on, it's in there. It's there. But I think yeah, you may I'm... have read like a third of Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's like I haven't done. Uh, uh, this reading in a long time long long time uh to be honest and uh, to be fair uh to even uh, the Anne frank <laughs> mm, i, I, I started reading yeah. uh, the di- diary of Anne frank way back in 2019 this is 2021 and i still haven't finished entirely the book i mean it it is uh, uh you know it uh story that is that makes you uh, take breaks. <laughs> yes. Some of it is is a little Some of it's hard. Heavy. Yeah, it's yeah. heavy. Yes, uh, but not you know not you don't take two years to read a, a two hundred page book. To be you know. I started the Diary of Anne Frank when I was twelve, and I have never finished it. So you're still ahead of me. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you like yeah, that, you that are, you are, you are... you've read that I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, right. so you are telling about yeah books. Yeah. So uh, about your. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what have you got for me? What movie are you? Uh, giving me this. Book? Before we do that, before mm. we do this big big swap, uh, what is the what is the last book latest book that you read? Ah, okay. So I've been reading. Uh, the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm currently in the, sh- the it, it's organized poems, short stories, novellas, plays, and I'm just coming to the end of the short stories. Um, mm-hmm. But I've put that away for a while because it, it's 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 huge. It's like that thick. Uh, he was a, he wrote a lot considering how young he died. Um, so I went on to reading. I can't remember what it's called. It's a guide to. To witchcraft in the home which i'm using as research for my next book mm-hmm. and um, i also read loki agent of asgard which is a comic book uh the whole ah, series okay. and loki the god who fell to earth yesterday so okay um i am just coming off tintin <laughs> you, as you know uh, i've been which one <laughs> which one the last tintin what was that i i don't know what order they're in <laughs> I know what oh, order Asterix is in. I I see. Okay. Uh, hang on. I'll quickly tell you. Or it should okay. be open on my. Hang on. Uh, while I look that up, what was the last movie you watched? I was watching Iron Man while I was chatting to you earlier. Um, what did I watch last night? We watched some. Oh, we were caught up with One Division last night, which isn't a movie, but is very good. Well, I'm on a bit of a Marvel kick at the moment. Um. I watched Closer to the Moon, which is brilliant. I don't know if you've ever seen that one or heard of that one. No. Um, it's about a group of rebels uh, between the wars, but towards when the Second World War is, is coming up, or I think during the Second World War. Mm-hmm. And they're captured and they're forced to make a propaganda film about the bank heist that they took part in. Um, okay. And it's how they respond to that. It's an extremely funny, extremely heartrending film. Um, I very much recommend it. Hmm. I've just written it down so I can put it on the IDM, IMDB list for you to tick off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the last one I read was Tintin in Thailand, which came out in 1999. Oh. It is not a, not a Hergé book, no, of course, I because seen. I've, I've uh, I'm, I, almo- I moved past 
the Ege books, long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just waiting on the last four books were were Tintin and the Picaros. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the nineteen eighty book called Breaking Free, mm-hmm. and uh, the nineteen eighty six Tintin and Alf art, which was basically uh, mostly. Uh, uh, it's like. Uh, these uh, and i could see that you can tell that they are not hair gay books yeah uh, so like, you can identify the voice as we were talking about the other day yeah 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 but yeah. I, i'm looking forward to uh, see if i'm able to do it when i in in print not you yeah. know through co- in comics comics is it's very it's i feel like it's easier to do with comics where because with artists usually have a certain that you a know, sort of set style yeah, yeah that they you know that evolves over year over years and immediately when that art uh, that artist or you know the author passes away and somebody else takes over uh you, even though they try their best to continue with, you know through uh their the being getting inspired and you know trying their best to imitate uh it comes through <laughs> yeah you can see um so yeah i just i'm 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 through with tintin and i'm uh, in, in i'm reading <laughs> a little bit of anne frank every day and i'm looking forward to what you have for me um the last movie i read was uh, the last movie i watched was uh, of course i robot two days ago mm. and then uh, yesterday i watched love wedding repeat <laughs> uh, right. which is more of a 7 out of 10 movie it's a, yeah. a decent it 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 uh, was about uh, uh, a wedding of course mm-hmm. and uh, what happens is the bride uh, tasks uh, her brother uh, with uh, the the bride's ex shows up at the wedding okay mm-hmm. and uh, they're all it in it's taking place in it's a british movie mm-hmm. and it's taking place in uh, italy so the brides invitees is that the term guests guests yeah guests guests <laughs> man invitees also counts i mean they are invited okay uh, so <laughs> so the guests are are in their uh, phrasing they they are calling it the english table where right. all the english speakers are sitting of course so uh, and she's she uh, enlists her brother's help to drug her ex <laughs> uh, so that he does not create a scene you know nice to me nice. and what he like he 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 pours in there are empty champagne glasses around and there are those those name things thingies mm-hmm. on the table where you're supposed to sit so he goes and he he drugs that glass empty champagne glass he pours the drug into it but you know those little kids at the wedding running around oh yeah they th- th- think it is funny to exchange the tags yeah uh, and then so the the rest of the movie is based on chance like they they go th- they come back to that uh, that point in time mm-hmm. and they show how what would what happens when each person at that table ends up getting done ah, that's cool so they What's that it, called? it's more like a multiple endings kind of a uh, exploring multiple endings what's it called uh, it's live... called love wedding repeat love wedding repeat yeah cool you can check it out it's it's not yeah, i like i said it's a 7 out of 10 uh, yeah it's a, it's a an afternoon just, movie you just watch it yeah you watch it and yeah. you enjoy it and then you forget about it <laughs> uh but shall we do the big reveal now mm, mm. that's all we that should is probably remaining. say in terms of structure we're going to be doing this once a month yes and then yeah, yeah. each so. six we're going to do it five times and then the sixth time i get to pick a movie and you get to pick a book yeah <laughs> yeah that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what what I'll be picking. I have No. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that I I still have time to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. but yeah. I I don't think uh, yeah, anyway. We'll we'll see Focus. about that when we get to it. Uh, cool. But uh, yeah, so we, today give, we are doing the choice. doing the big swap as yes. I'm calling it and <laughs> we don't have any name for it. Uh of the and and this is the first swap for the bucket list mm-hmm. <laughs> at the series and uh a month 
or sometime in may again will 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 be the next episode of this of the bucket list where we will be exchanging what we our thoughts or reviews yes. whatever all the uh, all that uh of the movie that lauren was or in the book i i read and then we'll do the next swap yeah but it's it's a, uh, yeah it's a simple format it's cool it's yeah. cool uh so yeah let's 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 do uh do it what what is the book that you have for me okay so i had several options for my first book is as you've seen i have a very long list of things I, yeah. that I was like, <laughs> what, what should we sh- what should we start with so i went with one from an author that i i love and i think probably he shaped the way i think for mm-hmm. most of my life um so it's Terry Pratchett, and it's a Discworld novel. It's called Reaper Man. I have a picture of it. Anyone who's watching this rather than listening to it will be able to see. So it's Reaper okay. Man yeah, by Terry Pratchett. Man. I think those who are who have already read it in the uh, if you are if you are listening or watching this, please no spoilers in the comments. But you can <laughs> you can if you have already read it, you can just mm-hmm. leave your thoughts on it. Do you want me to read you the blurb? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Death is missing. Presumed, uh, gone. Which leads to the kind of chaos you always get when an important public service is withdrawn. Meanwhile, on a little farm, far, far away, a tall, dark stranger is turning out to be really good with a scythe. And there's a harvest to be gathered in. (laughs) So, uh... It's a Discworld novel, so all of all of Pratchett's Discworld novels are based are set on the Discworld, which is another world, and it's not a sphere. It's not, and they would say that it's not anywhere near as uh, inefficiently run as a as a spherical world. Uh, hmm. It's a disc. On so the so back it's of, so it's it's it. What what genre would you say it is? Fantasy. Fantasy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm, I'd say mm-hmm. the genre is either fantasy or it's Discworld because it's kind of its own thing. Um, I didn't. I didn't use... know this disc world was yeah. a, was a genre. Oh, it's, it's the whole thing. <laughs> okay. um, there's like what? There's fifty, maybe at least thirty books set oh, in this wow. world. Wow. So, okay. Um, I so it's called the first uh, one. just to, because I'm I'm, right, I'm noting it down. It's called the Reaper. Re- Reaper Man. Oh, Reaper Man. Oh, okay. There you go. There you can spell it. Oh yeah. So Reaper Man by Terry Pratchett. Okay. Yeah. So cool. Uh, and, uh, so I did, I did you, give you the first when it says yeah sorry sorry go ahead all right uh, i didn't give you the first one in the series because the first few he was finding his feet as an author and also he was doing a lot of in jokes for other people who'd read lots of fantasy so they're oh. harder to get into um but i so, thought this was a, a good funny one to to mm-hmm. crack into then mm-hmm. they do happen roughly in time order but you don't ever have to have read any of the ones before to understand what's going on. Okay, you answered. My They're question. all standalone. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> because uh, I think any everybody anybody who has who has been following my channel would know that <laughs> no, I did not read the Harry Potter series in the right order, and, uh, and <laughs> I've there are multiple uh, inside jokes about that ha- that resulted from it that we have yeah. I've covered over time. Like uh, who is serious black <laughs> and stuff. Like that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you for uh, because it, that uh, it's not a continuous story, and I'll be yeah. Uh, okay, so the next question, without you know giving spoilers, when when it starts with death is missing, is death a character mm-hmm. in the book? Yes, yes. Okay, He's that's all I needed to know. <laughs> yeah. Still an out. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, and yeah. that, that that's why, hence the question. He's one of my favorite characters. Uh, you do get re- recurring characters: Death, the Wizards, the Witches, the the Watch. The first one I read was Guards, Guards, and I nearly sent you that one, but it's twice as long. And mm. I thought this one's. I don't know. There's something about Wendell Poons. You'll meet him. There's something <laughs> about Wendell Poons. This is one of my favorites. So, okay, okay. they're all my favorites. Oh yeah, Terry Pratchett's uh, Reaper Man. Yeah is mm-hmm. what i will be reading and uh, your task is Should i, I have to picked, uh not an english movie mm-hmm. and uh so like i i asked you if you're okay and you said uh, you're okay yeah. as long as there are subtitles yeah so i have unless it's in french because i can uh-huh. do right in french i have a spanish movie for you ooh and it is called the invisible guest 
Okay. Uh, the genre is crime and uh, thriller, or crime thriller. If if people sounds like it's up my alley already. Yeah. And cool. uh, I I don't know how many Spanish movies you have watched, so I I I won't know if if the actors look familiar to you or this not. This might be the second ever. I think the first the first one was a Spanish version of El Cid. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, I, I am near positive that it should be available on Netflix for you. Mm-hmm. So like I so the so the I'm reading off Netflix now right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Netflix tends to do this one sentence uh, synopsis for yeah. the movie, so I'll I'll read it out. It's a 2016 movie, okay? And it says, after walking next to his now dead lover in a hotel room, a young businessman hires a prominent lawyer to figure out how he he ended up a murder suspect. Ooh, so that does sound cool. Yeah. Are you already looking up <laughs> on, on, on Netflix? Yeah, on IMDb. Oh, on IMDb. Okay. Yeah. Did you? Oh, I am. I didn't do that. Cool. Well, I'm on IMDb anyway because I'm yeah. making my list. Did you? Did you? Did you end up on the page already? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Cool. Uh, Usually, IMDb has a slightly better synopsis than Netflix does. So I'm. I'm curious to see what they have. Come on, internet. <laughs> uh, let's see if pe- if people want to see. I'm switching the screen to. Oh, okay. So the uh, the Spanish word is contra tiempo, mm, which means setback. Uh huh. Successful entrepreneur accused of murder and a witness preparation expert have less than three hours. To come up with an impregnable defense is what IMDb says. Uh, okay. Did you did you check Netflix? I I think it it will be available. It should be. It's it's on my Netflix, so I'm I'm pretty sure it's on UK Netflix as well. We shall have a hunt. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> I was like, did I set my Netflix to play music as soon as I went? No, it I haven't. I good. That's good. <laughs> that's not deafening me. You can probably hear my really loud um, typing. Typing. The Invisible Guest. It looks like it's here. Is this the right one? Yes. Yep. I've got it. Good. Perfect. I have added it to my list. Okay. Sweet. Uh, any. Uh... Parting thoughts of today's episode. I think we have we we talked about uh, we we decided on a forty five minute and it has been forty five minutes. Yes, <laughs> uh, I think we we paced it well. We we covered <laughs> what we wanted to. So yeah. yeah, any anything anything you want to say? Uh not really. Because uh, I think uh, we don't know the next ep- episode of this series will be sometime in in May. Yeah, uh, roughly a month from now. Yeah, roughly a month from now. But uh, we may or may not come up with something else because this is uh, more of a, a broad theme podcast mm. uh, with upload and sync. Where it's uh, uh, like, did we talk it on stream? We don't know. We we, we don't know. I don't if know. We <laughs> discuss that on stream. Okay, I think we 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 discuss that off. So. Or I think we start the first episode of the previous series. We we talked about why it is called upload and sync. Was that mm-hmm. uh, so? It's it's an exchange of ideas. Uh, so if we come up with something else <laughs> that uh, is is uh, we we think is worthy of you know being part of upload and sync, we will do it. In the meantime, uh, we also thought you know I think we in the last episode, the last to last episode, we discussed about how we sh- we should do something on creative writing. If yeah. You remember. Uh, so we don't yeah. know. It will. Um, we might do. Yeah. Yeah. For I people, might, I might uh, help you to write a story with me, and then you can. Oh. Okay. I'll ask you the questions that I ask in my head mm-hmm. for each bit of yeah. plot, and we'll plot something out. Yeah. That'll be before. a cool exercise. Uh, yeah. If if you want to check out uh more content with that uh 
featuring Lauren and I, me, uh, in in the description of this of of this Twitch channel, there is something called there's a link for TLDR history is weird. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a small 2020 project of uh, 10 episodes <laughs> uh, yeah. that started and ended in 2020. But it, it, it's a good listen if you should definitely go check it out. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the YouTube playlist called uh, Chai Tea Conundrum that mm-hmm. uh, mostly has everything on YouTube that uh, features uh, the both of us. So, mm-hmm. and for our podcast listeners... It's upload and sync. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. On that note, you will find the links to Lauren's social medias and websites down in the description. Uh, mine as well. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Yes. And uh, see you, see in, you a month. in a month <laughs> when we'll review uh, Reaper Man and uh, the Invisible Guest. I cannot wait to see what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually it's not evil at all it's a great book yeah well be nice it was like <laughs> this is lauren sitting like this for a month uh, in, <laughs> waiting for the next next episode no, that'll yeah. be that'll be the month that i set you the gorman gas trilogy i'll be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's fun okay. it's fun how we are anyway. we are imi- trying to imitate each other's uh, evil laugh uh, but, uh, and on that note <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah on that note let's stop on that note <laughs> see you bye 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 bye